Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Luxury Podcast, your source for all things luxury and lifestyle. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Suzanne Mortimer Crawford on the line, and she is an occupational therapist. Uh, Suzanne, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So how to be optimistic when the world around you is pessimistic. I mean, I think we can all use a bunch of optimism right now, so I'm excited to talk to you about that. Um, but before we do, I want to talk a little bit more about what you're doing as an occupational therapist. Uh, so please, tell us a little bit more about your business. Absolutely. Well, occupational therapists in general help people to be as independent as possible regardless of their ability or disability. Sometimes that's altering the environment or providing somebody with the right tools to be able to do things for themselves. The population that I work with are generally senior citizens, people 65 and older. So it's a combination of equipping them with the right tools to do the things they need to do, their activities of daily living, in addition to providing education to their caregivers and modifying their environment. So that way, they're not just stuck having someone doing everything for them where they lose hope mm -hmm. and lose dignity. No, I love it. I, I love it. And uh, I think it's so important what you do. And I think it's also a great transition. Um, let's get into um, today's topic. So how to be optimistic when the world around you is pessimistic. I mean, tell us some secrets. Well, I know that right now with the outbreak of COVID-19, Everyone is feeling uncertain, they're feeling scared, they're feeling anxious. Some have talked about their anger and the difficulties with being at home, despite being at home with loved ones, how hard it can be to be around people 24-7 when you're used to being out and about. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I first took a deep breath and I asked myself, okay, what do I have to be grateful for? And the first thing that came to mind were my village, the people in my life that make things happen, that make things possible. Because obviously, you know, man is not intended to live in this world alone. And so the first thing I did was to reach out to the people that I care about, first and foremost, to make sure that they were okay. And then all of a sudden, I realized, wow, my village consists of so many people, not just the people I talk to on a regular basis, but the people I met back in college and in high school people I met while vacationing and while traveling. And all of a sudden with social media, I realized, wow, this is a real opportunity to reconnect with people and also to find out what's been going on with them because I had been so busy, you know, building my practice, working, that I had lost touch. And hearing their stories and hearing about what they did made me realize, wow, there's so much going on. There's so much to be grateful for and there's so much to focus on from a positive nature. Wow. Um, I, I think it's very well said. And I, I, one of the points that you made that I don't think a lot of people that, have li that are listening to this right now um, have done yet, and myself included, it took me a little bit of time to, to really get there, but it's to take that moment of pause, like you said, to take a breath, like to be okay with, you know, there's something major going on and you're not supposed to have it all figured out. Exactly. Nobody expects us to be cool, calm, and composed, especially, you know, in this climate. One thing that I think definitely helps is to limit the amount of news and politics because that tends to get people very heated and very emotional very quickly. And mm -hmm. it's hard to remain optimistic when you're being fed so much information. I don't mean to say to not be informed. Everyone mm -hmm. should be informed, and that's the way we can help each other the most. But to take it in doses that you can digest and everyone's, you know, appetite is different. So basically it's handling and digesting what you can at the rate that you can. And when it gets to be too much, stop and then put the focus back on the people in your life that are also positive and good natured and have positive things going on so that you can join forces with them, even if it's remotely or, you know, through the use of social media. It's still extremely important. 
Yeah, to me it's so tricky um, now because there's so much news and it seems like social media or anything, like you just can't get away from it almost. And so, like, we've made a really conscious effort to, and we always, I mean, just off the slant of my interview style anyway and what I like talking about, we veer, definitely veer on the side of positivity. And even when we're talking about something like what's going on, like this conversation, um, obviously we're doing it with a slant of, you know, the positive things and what we can learn from it and how we can move on and cope. So. I love all of those tips. Um, how have you found the? Um, how have you found um, some of the like your clients and other people that you've just spoken to? How? What are some ways that you've just seen other people dealing with it too? Just to provide some tips for people that are listening. Well, for a lot of these people who would be homebound, regardless, you know, of the conditions going on in the world today, they're using things like Zoom meeting to meet with you know large groups of people. So where they can't have these large gatherings, they can do it virtually, and they gain so much by actually you know, seeing their faces and seeing their emotions and their reactions and hearing their voice. And in addition to that, using things like FaceTime and other you know, media outlets like Facebook and Instagram, so that way they feel connected, even though they're not actually physically you know, with the public or with their loved ones. And they're finding that the technology is not that hard. And it gives the family members a chance, you know, to teach their older family members how to use, you know, these different modalities, if you will, and to empower them. Because the elderly are not, you know, inept. They're not, you know, unable to learn. They just need a little bit of additional time and perhaps, you know, a different way of being explained to. No, I love it, and it, I think it, it makes perfect sense, and and I think it's kind of it's kind of interesting because some of these stereotypes that are out there, um, you know, about technology and other things, and I'm like, number one, my mom's better than me on Facebook already, and all this stuff. I don't know how she does it, but she she's retired. That's how she does it. But uh, awesome. number two, I remember um, meeting a gentleman who he was uh, he was working on his. Uh, Kind of like think of it like his life story and just kind of telling stories for the future generation of his family, very personal stuff that he would do. But he had his YouTube channel and he was in his 90s. And I'm like, man, you're putting out more YouTube content than I do. <laughs> so it was like, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like I wish my grandfather, like this technology would have been around and he would have known of it when, uh, when uh, he was still with us because I would have loved to have watched his YouTube channel and to have like those memories and those stories from his background there. I mean, what an amazing, like, legacy he'd be leaving. And so I, I just encourage people that are listening to this to kind of think about it that way, too. Like, it's your legacy you're leaving and your lessons and your story for your family. I mean, there's a lot of other things to it than just like, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel or, oh, I want to do a podcast or, oh, maybe you don't have something to sell or that's not your business. That's not what it's really about. It's about sharing the stories for the common good. Absolutely. And these Patients that I have, you know, that are seniors, a lot of them are retired engineers and scientists and mathematicians and world travelers, and they have so much to offer. They've lived through World War II and the Korean War and Vietnam, and they have perspective that a lot of us don't have, but they remember it full well, and they're able to, you know, recount these memories and tell their stories, and it's so valuable to today's generation. No, I love it. Um, so, Suzanne, that being said, I could talk to you about this all day long, but um, we're about out of time. So if somebody wants to connect with you or to learn more about what you do, what's the best way for them to do it? Absolutely. Well, I can be found on Facebook under Suzanne Mortimer Crawford Muller. And that's really the best way. I can also be reached on Instagram at MamaSuz37. But uh, you can reach me on Messenger and we should talk. Awesome. Well, really appreciate you taking time to come out on the show today and uh, to spread some positivity. So thank you for that. And to the audience, as always, hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, definitely leave us, give us a subscribe there, but also um, leave us some comments in the video section. Love to know what kind of things you're working on. And uh, Suzanne, thanks again for coming on the show.